Wild Asia Monorail. My name is Matthew. I'll be your driver and tour guide. For your own safety and the safety of others, please remain seated at all times. With all body parts inside the train and off the rails, and refrain from eating, drinking, smoking, or vaping. The water is permitted. In the other light, we event of an emergency. There's an intercom button on the left side of your door. Ready to take a ride on the wild side? I'll take that as a yes. Here at the Bihutsu headquarters of the Wildlife Conservation Society, we're working hard to save wildlife and wild places around the world. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of Asia, which stops in China, India, Cambodia, Nepal, and Tibet. Oh, we thought we're leaving the beautiful Bronx. We've just traveled 7,000 miles to the wilds of Asia. The large honey-colored deer are called Barasinga. The word Barasinga means 12 kind in the Hindi language, as males will have 12 to 14 points on their antlers. Little guys with the white bellies are black buck antelope, smallest antelope species in Asia, fully grown, two and a half feet up the shoulder. Males have horns, females do not. The majestic-looking white deer are the factor in deer, newest members of our monorail family. They are relative of the red deer of Central Asia, and were highlighted on season six of the zoo. This hunt coming up tells an important conservation story. Farmers in Indonesia live close to the wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. WCS yeah. Yeah. Farmers in Indonesia. This unit created many different ways for farming to continue. In close proximity to the wild animals. One strategy was to soak ropes in chili powder. Elephants do not like chili and leave the farms alone, allowing the farmer and the animals to share the habitat. We all know that an animal that's extinct is no longer with us, like the dinosaur and the dodo bird. The animals in our next exhibit were completely extinct in nature and could only be found in zoos. We're talking about the Mongolian wild horse, or could it all species horse. We have 11 horses on display today, so don't stop looking after you see the first one or two. While there are genetic differences between wild horses and domestic horses, there are physical differences as well. They're shorter and stockier in build. They have an erect mane that's lacking for forelock. The piece of mane that falls between the eyes of a domestic horse. They're rocking the mohawk. They were born genetically awesome. Little guy is 10 weeks old today. The Bronx Zoo received our first herd in 1902. And since that date, we have had over 50 Mongolian wild horses born right here in the Bronx Zoo. We're happy to report that Mongolian wild horses are being successfully reintroduced into the wilds of Mongolia and southern China from both North American and Asian zoos. We're now going to hear from Jonathan Slatt, our Asian expert. I'm the Russia and Northeast Asia coordinator for the Wildlife Conservation Society. Or since you're not over there, get excited. Huh? Our easy agresso bala, easy video agresso bala, easy team. You got this today. Dobrovolsky's horse went extinct in the wild in the 1960s. On a recent trip to Kazakhstan, I thought about the ongoing and successful efforts in that country to bring these horses back to the Central Asian steppe. The world needs happy stories to watch the impossible become possible. To see hope restored. That's what's happening today in Travolsky's Wars. As you can see, we give our animals lots of room to roam, as we're still in the Mongolian wild horse exhibit. But I'll be able to pinpoint most of the animals for you today, even if they're not necessarily in plain sight. It's not difficult to do if you'd like to try, to put yourself in their hooves and figure out where you would go for a shady spot to rest, or a little grazing town. When we reach the top of this hill, we'll be on the lookout for another endangered species known as the gaur. That's G-A-U-R. Excellent scrabble word. The gaur are the world's largest wild cattle. Males stand 6 feet at the shoulder, 10 feet long, and weigh 2,000 pounds. With their incredible size and horns, a gaur can take on anything, 
even a tiger. What threatens these beautiful creatures is lack of an Asian habitat and diseases they catch from domestic cattle. If a horn points straight up, it's a male. If they curve in at the top, it's a female. Most of the herd is female. We're now going to hear from their keeper, Dave. Hey, can I only see one of his lectures? Wild animals. Wild animals. Mohi Shigula. Mohi Shigula. What Mohi Shigula? One male gower. He done out. It took a couple of introductions to all the animals. Oh, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. We're 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 since the two females and one male have been added to this family, there have been a number of offspring. This is important because gower are considered to be a vulnerable species. So it's vital to maintain a healthy growing herd here at the zoo. Our matriarch's name is Trixie. That's my wife's not here. It's easy to forget sometimes that the zoo sits in the heart of an urban setting. But shortly behind us, we're going to hear the roar from the concrete jungle, known as the Bronx River Parkway. The large wood fence in front of you obstructing your view is put there to keep back that traffic noise and help our animals feel more at home and calm. This is especially important since in the next exhibit, we're on the lookout for a tiger. Tiger stripes provide excellent camouflage, and sometimes we have difficulty spotting our tiger. This is Suhana. She's a 15-year-old female Malayan tiger. But Amor tiger is white, making it easier for her to camouflage. Look about 50 yards in front of the train, bottom of the hill. She's down here by the gate. Make sure you look in front of the train, because if you wait till you get down there, you will not see her even if you stand up, and you will not stand up. Hopefully she'll walk the hill for us. Suhana, up the hill. Come on. Good girl. Yes, keep going. Excellent. In the wild, tigers will eat wild pig and deer, and pig she will. She'll eat 40 pounds of meat in one setting, and then not eat again for three days. That's the equivalent of 160 hamburgers to you and I. If you ate 160 hamburgers, you wouldn't eat for three days either. Tigers, right? So like fingerprints, no two are alike. That's how we tell our tigers apart. And they're solitary creatures and prefer to live alone. That's why you'll only see one at a time on display here at the Wild Asia Monorail. We don't want them fighting over territory. You can see more tigers by visiting Tiger Mountain, a short walk from the monorail. Locked out on that one. This is the back of our gower exhibit. They were all out front. Ride the monorail at 5 o'clock. The whole hillside will be covered with gower. They go down under the tracks and sleep in the shelters behind us for the night. And we're now coming up on the back of our first meadow. Where we're greeted by India's national bird, the bee fowl. You know, even males are called peacocks. Females are called bee hens. They get together and make baby pea chicks. The males are ones with the impressive back feathers. They prop up with their tail feathers during the mating season. Once they've mated, they shed those feathers. That's what the white things all over the ground are. Now you can only tell a male from a female, because the males have blue heads and the females have green. They have free room in the Bronx Zoo. You'll see them everywhere today, not just here in Asia. As we round the bend, we're on the lookout for some pigs. Special pigs called babarusa. The word babarusa means pig deer in the Malay language, because the natives thought their tusks resembled deer antlers coming into a bamboo thicket. We're looking for two males today, Kenneth and Sprout, with tusks that erupt through their snout and back towards their eyes. Asia's version of Pumbaa. Kenneth's right here in the middle, walking to the left. Hey. 
Routes over here on the right. They hail from the island of Zulawesi and are highly endangered. Now, if you didn't see the Babarusa, have no fear. You can't miss our next lovely lady. We're never going to be able to our Asian elephants. The first thing to notice about an elephant is her size. She weighs approximately 10,000 pounds. She eats fruits, vegetables, 200 pounds of hay, and 60 gallons of water each day. The elephant's trunk is an incredible tool with over 40,000 muscles in it. That's more than the entire human body. It's got a finger like a pendage at the end. With it, she can pick up an egg without breaking it or tear down a small tree with great force. Patty's giving herself what we call a dust bath. It's an elephant's way of applying sunscreen. And if you saw the Animal Planet show, the zoo, you know that twice a week she receives special baths and pedicures. As we say goodbye to Patty, we're on the lookout for my favorite lady at the zoo. And that's Priya, our Indian rhino, and her son Patrick. Follow the road down to the left top of the hill by the fence. That's a rock. Take all the pictures you want. With less than 2,000 rhinos remaining in the wilds of India and Nepal, we're very fortunate to care for six of these endangered creatures. Caring for rhinos is one thing. Breeding's quite another. We're the luckiest zoo in the USA. We've had 16 rhino births here at the Bronx Zoo. Penny was our first, 1986. Our latest is Patrick, 2021. As we enter the second half of the exhibit, you'll see a fallen log. To the right of that fallen log is the original mud wallow, put here in 1977, when the monorail first opened. And right smack in the middle of that wallow, we'll find Priya and Patrick. Many people describe a rhino skin as armor-plated. It's actually very thin with lots of folds and needs protection from insect bites and the sun. To do this, they'll sit in the mud wallow, cover themselves with mud, and this acts as a natural sunscreen and insect repellent. Priya on the left, Patrick on the right. Priya tips the scales at a mere 3,500 pounds but can achieve speeds close to 40 miles per hour. Despite this fact, rhinos are endangered for their horn, which in some cultures is said to have medicinal purposes. As we drop down into the valley, we get extremely close to fences and trees. So sit back, keep all body parts, camera parts, anything you ever want to see again, inside the train. Asia's continent with the largest number of deer species, as well as deer diversity, as we'll see in this next the largest exhibit of the wild Asian monorail. For some more ruby animals to roam, the harder you have to look for them. As we enter the clearing, you'll see two circular fences inside the exhibit. Walking around those circular fences are some hog deer. Not baby deer, fully grown. They get their name because they're short, heavy like hogs, run like hogs, creep and crawl under things rather than over them like their deer cousins. As you'll see from the male's antlers, that's as big as that little deer will get. Can be support to the back of the fences. They haven't all worked their way over here yet. When we come around the next bend, top of the hill, 
you're going to get an excellent view. of our North American oak trees. It would cost millions of dollars to recreate an Asian forest, but since most of our deer were born here in the USA, they don't know the difference between an oak tree and an Asian tree. At least the leaf, they provide an excellent source of food and shade. Center of the exhibit, you'll see a dried up stream. Follow that stream all the way up the hill to the back fence line. And all the way at the top of this hill, in the shade, you'll see some very large chocolate-colored deer. Those are the sidebar deer, largest deer in southern Asia. They all stand five and a half feet at the shoulder and weigh up to 650 pounds. To the right, the tan animals with the black and white markings on their hooves are the Nilgai antelope. Largest antelope in Asia. The word Nilgai means two hundred and fifty pounds. They also have a blue plate coat of Finally, these medium-sized deer closest to the crate are the brow antler deer. They redefine the deer in the headlights look. They're currently classified as vulnerable, as all of their habitat has been taken over for farmland in their native Cambodia. We're now on the lookout for China's tufted deer. These little elusive deer get their name from a tuft of hair on their head where their antlers should be. Fully grown, less than 40 pounds, it can be very difficult to spot if they're not moving. Males have large canine teeth that come past their mandible, making it look like they have fangs, and giving them the nickname Vampire Deer. Latin when excited, they will howl, whistle, and bark like a dog. They are extremely rare in zoos outside China. We're lucky to have them. There's one sitting up here on the top of the hill by the tree. Looks like a large rabbit. He's shaking his head. Right there. Rabbit Too far away to tell if it's a male or female. Peek through the trees, you'll see Patty again. Can't hide an elephant. Another monorail going by as well. We're now crossing back over the Bronx River. At over 23 miles long, this freshwater river is home to fish, ducks, turtles, geese, and migrating birds. WCS realizes how important it is to maintain the Bronx River in Greenway, both as a healthy environment for wildlife and for Bronx residents to enjoy. Once we successfully cross the river for the second time, we're in the Rocky Himalayas, the perfect environment for mountain goats. Here on the boulder are some markhor, the national animal of Pakistan. The largest member of the goat family, most identifiable by the males in crescent beards and spiral horns. They can reach up to five feet in length. Those are both females on the boulder. Both males and females have spiral horns and beards. Female horns stop going after a foot. Male horns go a foot a year up to five feet. Male right there at the center of the rock. You'll see a few more on well, the side, side. Yes, so look through the trees. Is it? They're incredible athletes. They can go up to six feet in the air without a running start. They have been known to climb trees for food. That's why some of these trees are wrapped in wire. There's some of those impressive males coming up in the tree line. Now we're going to pass a Y-shaped tree, so close to the train you can touch it, but please don't. Look at the tree behind it, just below eye level, and here's two of our red pandas. The word panda means bamboo eater, that's how they get their name. They're actually relatives of skunks, raccoons, and weasels. In the ball, their name is Hummo, which means fire fox. And if you saw the movie Kung Fu Panda, Master Shifu was a red panda. The red panda was known to the Western world years before the black and white panda. The only thing they have in common is an insatiable appetite for bamboo. You can see more red pandas by visiting the Himalayan Highlands. A short walk from the monorail. While there, be sure to visit our snow leopard. There's a goat in tree now. Thinks he's a statue. Last two cars will be looking down just about now. 
as we wind our way down the hill. Our tour is sadly coming to an end, but I'd like to tell you a little bit more about us. The Wildlife Conservation Society manages five parks in the New York City area. The Bronx Zoo, Central Park Zoo that turns 90 this year, Queen Zoo Prospect Park Zoo, and the New York Aquarium on Coney Island. We also manage over 300 scientists in 60 countries throughout the world. We're working hard to save wildlife in wild places. You being here today helps us to do just that. And for that, we thank you. If you haven't done so already, download our app at bronxzoo.com backslash today. That's bronxzoo.com backslash today. It's an interactive map of the park when you're in our park. And then you'll receive notifications of all of our celebrations as we're celebrating 125 years here in the Bronx. Be sure to visit Animal Chronicles, a quarter mile walking tour of the history of the Bronx Zoo with model animals you can pose with. It's located in Astor Court by the fountain. We're gonna be making a brief stop to reset the computer. Please remain seated, this is not our final destination and we'll only be here for a short while. When you exit the monorail today, you'll be directly across from Jungle World, our indoor rainforest. As soon as you enter the rainforest, look to the right, there's a tree kangaroo that just had a baby, still in the pouch. If you're lucky, you'll get to see it peek its head out before mom shoves it back in. We also have otters, kangaroo, monkeys, and much, much more. Huh? Once again, pretty I'm a lot of support. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, three. I'll be half of the Wildlife Conservation Society and the Bronx Zoo. My name is Matthew. I've been your driver and tour guide. I thank you for joining me aboard the Wild Asia Monorail. Our animals are always in different places doing different things. So come back and visit us often and soon. Please remain seated until the train comes to a complete and final stop and the doors have opened. Remember to step yes, up for no? people in the front row, step down for people in the back row. Please watch your step as you exit the monorail car. First six cars exit to your right, last three cars exit to your left. Lucky car B6, you go straight out the gate. Train's about to stop, door's about to open. Only one thing left to do, thunderous applause. Enjoy the rest of your day here at the beautiful Rock Zoo. Please remain seated.